Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. Welcome back. You know, it's not often that we talk about the same subject twice in back-to-back -back videos within an, even just a few hours, but there's been updates that I think we need to touch on and because you never know what's going to happen by morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way things are going. Uh, look at this headline. War, 25 red states rally around Texas as battle brews with Biden over the border. And yeah, the number one hashtag on X or Twitter, as most of us still think of it, is civil war. I know. And even when we just did the last video, I mean, Mike, no more than just set the microphone down and it was up from 16 to 25 states. Yeah. And, you know, again, it, it's 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 moving so rapidly. So um holy cheese nits uh 25 republican governors just signed a joint letter in support of texas resistance as you can see um you know so you have half the country now we're, we are divided in half yeah. divided in half and this is the letter with the governors all signed right there and it says they stand in solidarity with fellow governor greg abbott in the state of texas and utilizing every tool and strategy including razor wire fences to secure the border. We do it in part because the Biden administration is refusing to enforce immigration laws already on the books and is illegally allowing mass, mass parole across America of migrants who entered our country illegally. That's a good word, parole, because so many of these really are uh, people, uh, unfortunately, that have been, uh, well, you know, uh, some released from prisons. Some are military. It's it's just so obvious. The authors of the U.S. Constitution make it clear that in times like this, states have a right of self-defense under Article 4, Section 4, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 of the U.S. Constitution. Because the Biden administration has abdicated its constitutional compact duties to the states, Texas has every legal justification to protect the sovereignty of our states and of our nation. So, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. If we look at people like you and I who were born here and who have family here and children here, and then if we look at the immigrants who have come over here, I mean, what are the numbers look like? I mean, is that our split? Are they then, go is it going to be like us against the migrants because they're going to give the migrants so much support and then not us? I'm just trying to work this out in my head. It just feels kind of weird. Um, there's been all sorts of, of thoughts which um, don't ring, um, well, I should say they don't resonate with me because I think, you know, everything is going to just keep moving so fast uh, instead of the way things have normally been. Uh, they have uh, objectives that they want to achieve in certain timelines. That's why, I mean, some have said, oh, they're just letting them all in so they can vote and change, you know, the voting paradigm. That's been going on forever. Uh, that goes way back, you know, to 1870s, 1860s, 1880s. Uh, they were doing that constantly with people coming from Europe. Uh, and it was in order to affect the uh, election outcomes. They've also used migrants to just come straight in, immigrants, and then, you know, become a citizen and then ship them off to war before. They've done that, too. That's the other thing I see people saying, oh, they're conscripting them for the inevitable war with uh, China and Russia or whatever. And, and no, uh, again, the most of what's coming in here, I think the bigger purpose with them is to actually utilize them as uh, as as basically members of military of foreign countries that are here to take over the, you know, the U.S., that's what the big play is, um, and they what the power structure in my mind is is banking on is that it's certainly a lot easier to get things done in a CCP or Russian style um, political system than it is in the U.S. And you know Europe is kind of in the middle in some ways, you know, because it just it does seem like there's. Uh, a tighter grip in Europe. There has been, but but Europe is rising up too now, uh, as you have reports of of the farmers' uh, blockades taking effect and starting to affect uh, the food supply. And you know, again, there there's going to be 
just everything going on in this year. You, not just one civil war, but and, and I'm not even sure how our civil war is really going to manifest because I've never really seen much of a civil war. What I see is a weakening and unrest that then allows us to be invaded by the BRICS nations. That's what I really see as the bigger uh, outcome. And, and then I hope this isn't too premature for the video, but earlier we were looking at um, what Trump had stated. Yeah. So that I wanted to talk about that when we get there, too. That's right here. So oh. so then again, now you already have. Basically, uh, there's no real opposition to, to Trump coming back to power on that side. Uh, as DeSantis has bowed out, Haley was never really a, a threat in any way. Again, it's just it, it's it's all about creating a certain illusion. So now you have Trump, who is obviously going to be the Republican nominee, calling for all willing state governors to deploy their National Guards to Texas. Deploy your National Guards to Texas and remove the illegals back across the border. If you have 25 states bringing all their National Guards together into one place, you have an army to oppose the federal army. And the reality is a lot of the federal army is going to jump to the other side in the, in, anyway. So this is how we know we are very close now. We are really close. We are watching these things unfold. Um, I, I still feel that we're going to see, quote unquote, natural disasters that are actually unnatural uh, in the U.S. In a, and on a scale that we've never seen in our lifetimes in, in the coming months. Uh, that will pave the way for the invasion force, too. And, of course, it'll be done using weather warfare uh, and all sorts of technologies that are in place. So, you know, here you go. This, this is creating a military to counteract uh, the federal military. But the reality is a large part of the federal military um, can't stand the 46 regime either. So, you know, it's, it's one thing I, I've always known that they're, they're going to try to create a civil war but i honestly have never um, gotten glimpses of that civil war but i have gotten tons of glimpses over my life of what looks more like a, a red dawn scenario coming so you know i think things are moving very very fast i, I mean at first when i saw this and uh, donald trump tweeted it I didn't believe it I'm like no he would never say anything like that but here it is I mean it's right here right in front of us and then my other my other thoughts are and I mean just now as Micah is talking I'm thinking um 9 what happened there you know there was these two very large towers on fire people really needed a lot of help and everywhere from in town those that could help anybody and everybody went into those towers so many of them and we lost them so is this what concerns me is like starting a big fire in texas and everyone's going to go there to try to put it out because that's what we do we come together we show solidarity but what's going to happen after that i mean i just see a huge setup it just doesn't it doesn't feel good at all well yeah and to give you his words he says we encourage all willing states to deploy their guards to texas to prevent the entry of illegals and to remove them back across the border all Americans should support the common sense measures by Texas authorities to protect the safety, security, and sovereignty of Texas. Uh, when I am president on day one, instead of fighting Texas, I'll work hand in hand with Governor Abbott and the other border states to stop the invasion. Okay. The other thing that this hits me with, if he wants to take the National Guard of all the other states, move them to one location in Texas, um, what about all the illegals that are already in place in those other states? Right. They have are they going to have free reign? All they got to do then is just uh, take out the police, and they will start to control the cities in these states. So, you know, again, you have to realize uh, from our perspective, we don't trust any politicians. Of course, you know the right has seemed much better than the left, but at the same time. Uh, it's still all part of one big octopus. And yeah, you know, this is ab absolutely escalating. What this would do is then, you know, if we go back and um, look at the, where was the maps? Was that back there? Let me see. 
here it was over here they were okay I, um i guess it got moved out um which is strange because i know i didn't exit but um when you look at this okay so all these states start moving their national guard to texas and say again there's escalation uh something else happens what if you know, Russia moves into Poland or Lithuania, Latvia, one of those. All of a sudden, you know, China goes on Taiwan. Right now already we have so much abroad as opposed to close to home. Yeah, you know, you move all the National Guard units out of here. They're all in Texas. Then maybe uh, that's a great time to start the invasion into Florida, start the invasion down across Can Canadian border. And, uh, you know, it'd be a go for the immigrants that are really sleeper cells already in place to start taking over these other areas. Makes perfect sense to me. So, you know, th that's why this felt like this is really important. Um, again, there's so many of these videos. This is Malibu. Malibu. They're landing in Malibu on um, boats and coming into place. Um, again, the big cities, and the big cities close to the border, you don't want to be in the big cities close to the border. Uh, whether we're talking San Diego, L.A., or Phoenix, or Tucson, you know, and I wouldn't want to be in Miami either, honestly. Um, there, you, you want to move away. Uh, these people are, are going to be, um, again, they're going to be forming platoons. They're going to be forming um, military outfits and, and getting ready to, to make their moves. So, you know, this is definitely a very, very sobering situation. And, yeah, absolutely, you know, U.S. Civil War is looming. And it does have to go uh, start to take place before the election. That's what it does feel like. Uh, because, again, there's other things that they're doing this, too. By the way, it's the 185th anniversary of the Texas flag, by the way. Um, there's other things that they want to utilize the timing of astrologically, like the next eclipse in, in April. You know, that's a big one. And all this is centered around the Pluto return of the U.S., which was, again, uh, you know, the center point was 222 And, you know, what did we have right after that? We had the whole Ukrainian war start. And so, you know, this is, we're close to the, the third eclipse now. And it's all about the end of the U.S. as we know it. It's all about splitting it up, dividing it up, and uh, destroying Babylon the Great, if you're talking about a uh, a biblical perspective, which does include the uh, European Union, all of, all of the NATO countries. And by the way, RFK Jr. joins the 25 Republican governors in support of Texas. And even uh, Nikki Haley also made a statement in support of Texas. Um, Bobby Kennedy Jr. is going to be on the ballot in all 50 states as well. And he says he's gaining one point a month, and he's got nine months. All he needs is to win 34% to win the election. And he's already at 24% average. Uh, and it says his favorability rating, ratings are better than Trump or Biden. Uh, this is the other really interesting uh, little addition to all this. There are laws, and I'm going to have to go and look back and remind myself as to nobody getting uh, any sort of majority uh, that could end up making it so that I believe the House of Representatives would just simply select a president. If there was no um, definitive majority, um, I'm going to have to look it up, but that, that came up a couple months ago. And I was looking it up, and I think it goes to a vote in the House. And they literally wouldn't have to even pick uh, Bobby Kennedy Jr., Trump, or Biden. They could pick somebody just totally out of the blue. Oh, wouldn't that be an interesting thing? But I, I do think by that time, uh, we will be at direct conflict with the BRICS nations. Could that get postponed? Again, nothing is set in stone. Um, but we should take note of what's going on around the world. This is back in Ecuador. Remember, we were talking about the Ecuador situation several times in recent weeks. Now, 
heavily armed troops are just going car to car, pulling everybody over. This is kind of the way it's going to look in, and unfortunately, our nation and in the EU nations, too. Even if you're not up there on the on the front lines, not dodging bullets and bombs, life will not be normal. It's going to go to a militarized way of life. A, a martial law type of thing is what we uh, will be faced with in, in the future. And this lady was rescued after spending 14 hours on top of her overturned and submerged pickup. This is in Livermore. This is east of San Francisco. Um, by the way, you know, uh, shoot, <laughs> we we have like I had said to Cindy, oh, we we should do a pond in the yard. It'd be so nice to have a pond in the yard. Well, we got three of them right now. We have three ponds in the yard right now that are growing. We have a lot more rain coming, and there is an atmospheric river that's going to be pounding uh, the west coast. What does that do? Well, when you have tons of water. Water adds a lot of weight. You know, water is eight eight pounds per gallon. When you have massive amounts of water, unusual record floods going on, and an atmospheric river condition that's that's going to be heading into the West Coast, uh, you're just heightening the likelihood of big earthquakes. And I do think we will see those in the coming months. Well, you know, I I keep going back, and I just I just I cannot shake it. The the quick vision the quick picture that i got of the towers when i saw that photo of texas and all the other states that are involved in uh <clears throat> and and then someone asking that you know everybody who's willing come down here to to texas i, I just i think it's a setup i don't trust it um i don't know the only thing i can tell people is like now is definitely the time to be ready for something because this absolutely does not feel right and and that quick vision that flash of the towers in my head the that's yes that's what i got the twin i'm just kind of scared to say it because you know we're just we're shut down left and right but still um that that vision's not going away because i i think there's something to it i think there's something tied to that for everything that's happening. A second 9-11 type scenario. Definitely, definitely a second 9-11. This is just what it feels like. That's why I couldn't believe that what's his name is telling people, oh no, everybody that's willing, come on down to Texas. Why would you take people's protection away? You know, unless there was other plans. And that's exactly what happened with the Twin Towers. I mean, they, they, they pulled like all the protection and and the the guards not not the guards but they had uh they pulled the bomb sniffing dogs and there was just so much piled that happened before 9 11 before it happened and i keep seeing it and it's just bothering me now yeah it, it smells like a setup you know bring them all into texas yeah. meanwhile they've been bussed and shipped all over the nation so you know, and then and then What's to say that they're not going to do something horrible to Texas? And that's just what I keep thinking. Yeah. So as always, guys, uh, thank you for your support. We couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you for everybody that's joined us over at Patreon. There are exclusive videos go up over there. Uh, definitely, you know, make sure that you're prepared and as ready as you can be. And think about all the supplies, whatever those are, all the basic needs. Uh, I think now is absolutely time to double check everything that you've done because, you know, the sands of time are running out of the clock absolutely quickly as far as time to prep before we are in a totally different place where we might be faced with rationing and all sorts of new things to contend with. Much love, source bless, and namaste. Namaste.